Vectors or embeddings are effectively arrays of numbers that represent something. They could be capturing different visual features of images, representing product attributes or features, or even encoding sentences or phrases as seen in LLM use cases. We might then want to search those vectors to find similar images, products to recommend, or relevant content for a search term. Uh, and so what, doing that is called vector search. And so we start off with our vectors and then we need to store them somewhere. And that could be in memory or on disk. And there'll be a lot of smarts uh, in, this, in this area of the solution. The next thing is we have a search vector. So this is a thing that we wanna try and find uh, the things that are closest to it or its nearest neighbors in those vectors that we, that we previously stored. And then finally, we'll get back uh, some sort of array, a list, of the, of the vectors that are closest to R1. Let's have a look at how we could do this in a Jupyter notebook. So we're gonna install a few libraries, NumPy, Scikit-learn, Plotly, and Pandas. And what we're gonna do first is create some vectors to work with. So we're gonna use NumPy and we're just gonna create some, some vectors. We'll create 20 vectors uh, between uh, one and 100 and we'll create them with a size of just two. So they're gonna have two, two elements in each and let's print out those five of those vectors to the screen. So you can see, there we go, they're, they're reasonably simple, right? We've got 38 and 32, 58, 18, and then and so on. What we wanna do now is we're gonna use Plotly so we can see what those look like on a, on a chart. So we're gonna create a, a figure, we'll create a scatter plot, and then we'll just update the layout so it's a little bit easier to read. And so you can see here that the blue dots are those vectors that we've created. And in this case, our vectors have a dimension of two, so we can actually visualize them uh, on a chart. Normally, your, your size will obviously be much bigger, and it, it's actually very difficult to, uh, to visualize them without doing some sort of um, con condensing them down to a smaller dimension. What we're going to do next is find the nearest neighbors. Uh, so we're going to use uh, scikit-learn to do this and we'll start by creating a search vector. So our search vector is just going to be simple. It's going to be the point 10, 10. Let's have a look where that fits compared to all those other vectors that we saw. So let's just add a trace to our figure. And if we visualize that, you can see the red one is down in the bottom left. We can see there's one quite near it, maybe an X, I don't know, 15, 14, somewhere around there. Um, maybe maybe a little bit less than that. And then we've got a few over there near the, near the 40, maybe 35 or, or so. And then the other ones are a little bit further away. What we're gonna do next is use the nearest neighbors class from scikit-learn. Let's have a quick look at the docs to see what parameters we have available. Um, so the main thing, you can see there are a bunch of different things that we can, we can specify, but what we're most interested in are the algorithm and the metric. So we'll just use the brute force, uh, brute force rather, algorithm for now, uh, and we'll use the default Minkowski metric. But you can kind of see on those docs, you can choose uh, different ones. We're now gonna create our nearest neighbor's algorithm, passing in the algorithm and then the, the metric. And then after we've done that, we need to call the fit uh, function uh, on the vectors. In this case, the fit is not actually going to do anything because we're using brute force. It doesn't actually do any manipulation or transformation of the data. Once we've done that, uh, we can then call the cane uh, neighbors function, pass in our search vectors. So remember that's 10, 10, and then the number of neighbors that you want. So we're gonna say three and we'll get back uh, and then print out the distances and the indices. And so you can see we get back, there's one with a distance of three, and then a 22 and a 25. So presumably the three is the one that was right next to us and then 22 and 25 were a bit further away. We also get the indices and we can use those uh, to then iterate. So we'll join the, the indices and the distances together and then we'll print out the actual vector that it was and then the distance. And so now you can see it was vector 11, seven, 32, 15 and 35, six. Okay, so that's working out so well. So that's like the basics of vector search. Let's have a look at what happens if we use more and indeed bigger vectors. So we're gonna create some vectors. This time we'll put uh, a dimension, let's say 64. Now normally you'll be even bigger than this. So sometimes you see uh, embedding uh, algorithms will sometimes be using maybe more than 300 uh, dimensions, but we'll go for 64 and let's create 5 million of them. So not too many, but enough to, to, to see, what, see what's going on. Uh, and then we'll use um, NumPy to, to generate some numbers for those vectors. Next, we're going to create an instance of the near, nearest neighbors class again for each algorithm. So we'll do brute force again. And we'll then do two others. Uh, and these are, these are the KD tree and the ball tree. So first of all, let's create the brute force one and we'll call that fit function. This one executes immediately because it's not actually doing anything. Let's now move on uh, to the next one. So this is the KD tree. So this time we'll pass in the algorithm of KD tree. Uh, and when we call the fit function here, it's actually gonna take a while to run. So while it's doing that, let's have a look at the docs for this algorithm. So you can see at the top, it sort of talks about how it's generally improving brute force with tree 
uh, structures to reduce the number of distance calculations that have to be uh, executed. And then goes down, if you look at a bit, little bit further down, the KD tree is a binary tree structure and it's re relatively quick to construct. Interestingly, it then points out that it doesn't work well on high dimensionality data, which is anything they, can, they consider to be above 20. So we've got 64. So this is going to be interesting to see if this uh, actually works. And now let's finally, now that that one's finished, let's uh, create the ball tree. So passing ball tree there. And while it's uh, calling the fit function, let's go and have a look at the docs of that one. Uh, so you can see here, it actually explicitly points out that this is addressing the deficiencies of the KD tree by dividing data into nesting hyper spheres. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but uh, for now, all we need to really know is it's a little bit more costly to build. And indeed, if we, we wait a few more seconds, we can see that it took just under 32 seconds to build. It's only a tiny bit longer than the KD tree, but yeah, still, still a little bit of time. Let's now create a, a search vector. So this one needs to be a bit, big, a bit bigger. So it needs to be 64 dimensions instead of our previous one of two. And you can see, there we go. We've got a bunch of numbers. Now what we're gonna do is create a nearest neighbors function. So where we can pass in an algorithm and the number of neighbors. And then at the top, we're gonna to time how long does it take to work out the K nearest neighbors. We'll then print out that time. And then finally, we're gonna put the, the IDs that come back, the, the vectors themselves, and then the distance into a data frame. Uh, and then we'll be able to print that onto the page. So let's, let's use that. So we'll pass in the brute force uh, algorithm and we'll say three three neighbors and let's run that it's reasonably quick so 1.2 seconds uh, across those five million vectors and you can see we've got back three so we've got seven three five one three one one five four two six and you can see it's got the vectors for each of those as well what about if we do the same for the kd tree um, so you can see again it's, it's reasonably quick so this one's 0.9 seconds it's about 0.3 seconds faster than the brute force so we did actually get some benefit i wasn't, I wasn't necessarily convinced that was going to happen and now let's uh, let's do the last one. So this is the, the ball tree. And you can see it's, it's got a little bit faster. So another 0 0.1 seconds faster than the KD tree. Now, obviously, if we were doing this for real, we'd probably run this a few more times and see, see whether we're actually getting a benefit from using this indexing structure. But more or less, that's the basics of vector search. There's a lot more to learn, but we're going to continue with this in other videos. If you enjoyed this video, you might like this other one up here, which shows how you can use vector search to provide context to OpenAI or GPT prompt.